Good morning, folks. The visualization you are watching right now is indeed from a global warming perspective, checking our precipitation patterns. For those with the mindset, however, that we are in a situation of all types of climate extremes, not just warming, you may yet find some gems in the accompanying article. Got a new site for the list today, The Famine Watch from USAID. Shows short-term and long-range concerns, including climate risk to food supply. You can click in to find location-specific information and a lot of other resources. Link is below. Also got this terrific 2,000-year temperature data. This is not one for the anthropogenic warming shells as it even discusses solar and volcanic forcing. Link to the pay article is included as well with a complimentary entry by the American Meteorological Society. I suggest you read that one. Had some explosive activity at the Cleveland volcano. Minor ash cloud is visible on satellite. A tornado dropped in the Philippines, but their worst disaster of the day involves a Chinese fishing vessel crashing into and destroying 500-year-old protected coral, and to top it off, they found a cache of endangered species inside the boat. The storms continue for this part of the world, hail wreaking havoc again. Flash flooding continues as the rain refuses to leave Saudi Arabia. New Zealand took some flooding in the past day and the system appears stalled just west of Northland. Italy and coastal Greece have some lightning warnings and again we see flash flood and potential in the Gulf states. Yet another gamma burst folks, this one from early this morning out of the Cancer constellation. Solar wind shows no space weather impact but demonstrates an important principle, the solar wind varies. Just like normal weather changes daily, so does ambient quiet solar wind, sometimes less quiet than others. We see a smooth density reading in orange becoming jumbled at the end, indicating a highly variable stream. Not much on speed in yellow, but the temperature swings in green at the bottom are evidence as well. This morning our shield is bending a bit to try to deal with that fickle stream. Must have been a good shot at the end to penetrate plasma to the ionosphere and shield enough to induce a noticeable resonance while sending the electron count to the floor. The sun has been more active lately with some larger sea flares returning this morning. Not at solar max levels yet, but better than two months ago. Those upset with the sunspot comment yesterday should Google what it means when you're upset by self-deprecating humor, and conversely what it means when you can laugh at it. These sunspots need some magnetic mixing if they ever hope to pop a good sized flare. Then we come to the active region that fired the M flare two days ago. She is still morphing nicely, still have all kinds of magnetic mixing in the middle, and when you see the umbers in relation to the color you realize we could have a delta spot in there. Also got eyes on the southeastern limb with this little guy. Umbral fields for the month of May so far. Major quake watch was called just in time for that green opening on the left to close up and stay shut. How embarrassing. That little sliver has popped back open this morning. Admittedly, this has been one of the harder fields to predict, especially because the lines atop the SDO AIA don't match and they don't seem to have changed throughout the field popping over the last week. The coronal hole stream will be here in 36 hours, if not sooner. Got a couple plasma filaments leading that big active region turning in from the limb. Bright guy there popped the M flare as he crested. I'll leave you with the full disc and 193 angstroms, the latest climate records chart from NOAA, and a look at the new active region on the south. Eyes open. No fear, it's 6.35 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.